everybody, Courtney here with Smitty's Fly Box, and we are just going to be going over our monthly fly box, our intermediate pattern for um, April, and it is our Woolhead Sculpin. Fun little pattern to tie, and it moves like crazy in the water. So I've already started my thread here, just behind the eye. I'm going to take my yellow 4 millimeter barbell eyes here, and I'm just going to place those so that barbell is just centered right on top of the hook shank. I'm going to bring my thread up and across the eyes across my hook shank then bring those uh, thread underneath the hook back over top of the eye just to help hold that on so it's essentially just a figure eight wrap now with this i don't want to have my eyes set too far back i'm going to have just a little bit of a gap here from my barbell eyes to my eye of my hook maybe about half an eye width is what i'm going to be doing there and i'm going to secure these in with a few more tight figure eight wraps. I'm just going around the hook shank and around those eyes, just doing some cross wraps there. As you can see that from the top. You wanna to make sure that those eyes are centered as well. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wrap underneath the eyes, but I'm not gonna go around the hook shank. And what that does is that helps suck in all those thread wraps we just made, tightens them right against the base of the eyes. I'll just move my thread back out of the way. And I'm gonna turn these eyes so they are facing down. So this will ride hook point down. Okay, and I always like to, any eyes that I ever put on, I always just like to add a little bit of zappy gap here. And this did not come in your box, but if you have some super glue at your tying desk, I recommend putting that on there. Okay, we're gonna wrap back here to our tie-in point for the rest of our materials here. The first thing we're going to tie in here is our zonker strip. So I'm going to use the olive colored zonker strip that we got. And I like the tail just to be the length of the hook shank. So I'm just going to take this back here. I'll part the hair where I'm going to be tying that in. And then I'm going to bring my thread up and around here, just right through that part. And again, I'm trying to really anchor that back here just before the bend of the hook and trying not to get that rabbit strip in my glue too much there. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple of good tight turns here just to make sure that's really anchored on there. Okay, and I'm gonna pick this back and just bring my thread right in front of my rabbit there. Fold my rabbit hair back out of my way. Okay, next we're just gonna use our dubbing for the underbody here. And I'm just gonna use this lighter color dubbing that you got in your box here. This is just that diamond dub and that crystal white color. And I think this looks really good with the um, olive variation or the tan variation that you got. Uh, it just kind of gives it that lighter undertone body. And so when this fly lifts, that white really kind of shows through and the fish will see that underbelly. Again, I'm just gonna pull my rabbit hair back. I dub that dubbing on there tight and I'm gonna start bringing that forward. And I just try to keep a nice even body here. I'm gonna add a little bit more to this one. So I'm gonna get right behind my eyes here and stop. So you can see there, I've left a little bit of a space just right behind the eyes. I didn't wrap right up against the eyes. And I'm gonna tie in our rabbit strip here. I'm gonna fold this forward. And I'm gonna part that right where my thread's gonna go. And bring that up and over. I'm pulling that rabbit strip fairly tight. And then I'll anchor that with my thread. Cut out my excess here. And then just make sure that's secure with another three or four good tight wraps there. Okay, so there's our rabbit. Okay, so I've cut out a length of this near hair. So the near hair is about the length of the hook. And I've cut this end here nice and flush. I'm just going to rotate my hook here in the vise. And I'm going to tie that in right at the bottom of my fly. I'm going to leave that long for a second. I'll trim it here at the end. You'll see why after we get our wool in there. Um, but I'm going to leave that long for now. I'm going to tie in a clump of this pheasant rump on each side. And this 
kind of hard to pick up on it so I like to make a little thicker clump and I'll just have that extend to the back of the fly hold that right against the side here bring my thread around tighten that and I will trim out my excess and then repeat that on the opposite side again the length of the hook is what I'm shooting for there loose wrap just try to keep that right on top so it doesn't actually go under the eye it's just going to sit right above the eyes okay now we're ready for the fun part now we're ready for the wool if you never worked with wool um it can be it's really fun to work with i really enjoy working with it it's a cool material to tie with and shapes really well um, but the main thing is is preening it out so we're going to pull it apart and basically stack all of these fibers here so I'm just going to pull it, stack it back on top, and just pull it. This is just separating these fibers out. It's going to make it a much easier to tie in and then to shape as well. So I've got a nice clump there, not too thick. Obviously, if you get a lot, it's going to be really hard to tie in and work with. So I've just got a little, if you can kind of tell in the camera there, but just a nice little pinch of it is all. I'm going to lay it right on top of my hook shank. Right where my thread's hanging there, I'm just going to divide that half and half. I'll bring my thread up and around and just cinch that down tight. Two, three wraps. I'll just kind of start folding it back like this. I'm going to take another pinch. What I've found too with the wool, again, I'm going to preen that. I'm going to sit there and pull it apart and stack it. I found with wool, when you're working with it, you, you really don't need a ton. Um, my first couple of streamers I tied with wool, they floated because the, <laughs> I had so much wool on it that it just didn't sink even with the eyes on it. So you can really add too much. Um, just kind of play around with it and see what you feel looks really good to you. Um, but you really don't need a lot. And so I'm going to take that another pinch there, lay that right against the bottom. And I'll bring my thread again up and around. This is all behind the eyes here. So I've tied in two sections right here behind the eyes. Now I'm going to bring my thread to the front. So I'm actually going to pull all this back. Bring my thread right here. We're going to tie in a, a section right here on top of the eye. So we're going to kind of pull this back, leave it hanging out there big and bushy. Okay, so my next section here, again, I've pulled that all apart. I'm going to stack that right on top. I'm going to bring my thread actually in front of the eye. Here, so I'm trying to get that just basically right on top of the eye. I'm going to fold that back. And just kind of build a little bit of a base there to help that, that um, wool to go back. Okay, so now I've got a little tiny space right here at the front of the nose of my fly here. So, okay, so I've got another pinch of wool here. Now with this one, I'm actually going to bring that wool onto the hook shank and kind of wrap it around forming kind of a cylinder around my hook here. And I'm going to bring my thread up and around loose and then bring it down tight as I get that full turn there. Again, I'm just going to get that nice and tight. And that's going to get that wool to encompass the entire hook. And now you're just going to kind of push all this back, finding your eye of your hook here. And if you kind of just pull all that back with your hand, now I can just kind of create just a little bit of a nose right in front of everything. And then we can go ahead and whip finish. Okay, now the fun part, we get to trim all this out here. I usually like to start on the bottom, so I'm just gonna kind of stand it up. Now I'll just come along the bottom here. Just kind of create a flat belly, flat under belly here on the bottom of the hook. I like to just, I don't like to just go in just really deep and cut. I like just kind of bring my scissors in shallow and then start to work my way back. Just kind of create a small 
flat surface on the belly of that fly. So now my or my my red underthroat here, I'm just gonna pick that up. I wanna be able to see it, that's why I left it long. And so I wanna just kinda of gauge to see how long of a piece I need to leave there so it's still visible to the fish as we're fishing it. So I just picked it up, just cut right above the hook point. So now I'm gonna cut out my eyes here. So you can see these eyes. And I don't know if you can see on the camera, I'm kinda of keeping my scissors at an angle so they're kinda of not going straight back, but they're kind of pulled back towards me, just they're at a slight angle. Okay, now we're ready for the top of the fly here. I can still doctor it up a little bit on the bottom, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna show you how to do kind of the, the top section here. I like to have my, my wool kind of flowing to the back, so I'm not gonna cut it really short. I'm just gonna kind of come in here at an angle, almost follow the angle of the eye of the hook, and we're just gonna start to kind of cut some of this out. You can really shape this really however you want. It's kind of like deer hair in, in the sense that you're just going to shape that head kind of to what you want it to look like. So I'm just going to kind of have that sculpting profile, just kind of a fatter head, something that's going to really move in the water. Push water is the main thing with the wool here. It's really going to make that water really move really good. So that's kind of flowing back. So I can sit here and trim this up a little bit more. Just kind of even it out in places. Get it to what I like. Come back in here. All right, guys. So that's it. That's the wool head sculpin. That's a short wool head sculpin. Um, a lot shorter than some of the bigger streamers that we see out there. This thing darts really good in the water. Um, feel free to obviously give us a shout out on Instagram or Facebook, tag us in any uh, fish that you catch with this fly, um, your pictures of the fly as you uh, tie it, and let us know how you do it. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out more fly tying videos and content we have coming out. So uh, good luck with it and let us know how you do.